Good day dear chess lovers, Zorlan here and in today's video I want to share with you a very interesting game which the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal played against Grandmaster Ilya Smirin. In this game we are not going to see dashing sacrifices but instead Tal will demonstrate a, a great positional piece play. First he will paralyze his opponent's pieces and then will demonstrate great end game technique. Uh, this game was played in 1990 in Podolsk at 2nd Soviet Club Cup. For this game I will first use chess if opening 3 and then uh, we'll turn on Stockfish and we will see how uh, accurate is Tal's piece play. Tal is on the white side and he opened up with knight f3 to which Smirin answered with knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, d4, the good old king's Indian defense is on the board. Uh, castling kingside is the most popular move, we have it. Bishop e2, again, the most popular move, e5, and d takes e5. Not the most popular choice, as you can see, castling kingside, d5, bishop e3, more popular, but in the game we have d takes e5. This is the exchange variation. As you know, Smirin was a King's Indian player and on the other hand, earlier before this, Tal had never played exchange variation when facing King's Indian defense. I guess he wanted to surprise his opponent and drag out of uh, home preparation. Also looks like that Tal had something very interesting in his mind when going for this line. He takes e5 by black and we have the exchange of queens on move 8. A very rare scene, of course, when you can see Tal going for an exchange of queens this early, yes. Uh, then comes bishop g5, the most popular move again, and c6, yeah. Let me tell you that before this, Smirin had played c6 once and rook e8 twice. Uh, rook e8 is the most popular move, but in the game we first see c6, so he's not hurrying to unpin the knight by playing uh, rook e8 and instead is taking under control the d5 square. Since now the pawn on e5 is unprotected, Tal won it. Again the most popular move according to chess if opening 3, which by the way they are refreshing every week, you know, and rook e8 by black. So now question arises how to proceed and we have it castling queenside by Tal, again the most popular move. There is a back rank weakness, the knight is untouchable, that's why black played knight a6 and rook d6 by the magician from Riga. Uh, starting from 1988 uh, this move had been seen and yeah looks like that it's a very strong one and he's starting to create problems for his opponent. Let me tell you that after this game uh, Smirin uh, stopped going for c6 line and instead uh, rook e8 became his main choice. Castling knight a6, rook d6, counterattacking black knight and rook takes e5, a little bit dubious, you know, better was bishop e6. Yeah, as you can see, bishop e6 is the main move. Now let me turn on uh, stockfish. Okay, yeah, as you can see, bishop e6 is the main move according to stockfish. The best move, actually. Knight e4, knight h5. But we have rook takes e5, after which white is gaining an advantage of one pawn like. There came bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, rook takes f6. Knight c5, rook goes back to d6, so Tal wants to play rook d8, thus uh, paralyzing these pieces, you know, making it hard to develop. Knight takes e4, black is hurrying to win back the lost pawn, but there comes rook d8 check. King g7, knight takes e4. Uh, the, where black's defense went wrong? Probably in here, you know. Yeah, in here. 
I guess rook takes e5 is not good. Bishop e6 is preferable. Or knight e4. Bishop e6. Instead we have rook takes e5 after which black is starting to face serious problems. Now let's follow the game. So rook d6. Black is winning back the pawn and there comes this check. King g7. Knight takes e4. Rook takes e4. Note how accurate Tal's moves are. And it was in here that Tal made another very strong move. Yes. Bishop f3. He's sacrificing the pawn on c4. But he's getting a bishop on this diagonal, thus stopping black from going for, for example, b6, followed by bishop b7. Rook takes c4 check. The pawn sacrifice was accepted. King d2. c5. Rook c1. And rook d1, rook e1, rook c1. Or else, or all moves are strong. Rook d1 is the first choice. But okay, rook c1 is also among top choices. Rook takes c1. Rook d4 looks to be a better try. Takes, takes. Yeah, even so, there is no defense, right? White is winning. Uh, in the game we have rook takes c1, king takes c1, h5, h4, trying to cement opponent's king side. Rook e8, f6. Was rook e8 the top move? Among the top. a4 was also playable. But there is no way out, you know, you can't activate your rook. Bishop d5, g5. Black is like in a position of Tsuksavank, you know, there is no way to make a progress. Takes, king g6, king d2, b5, king e3, b4. With this pawn push, black is, I don't know, trying to gain some his play but soon black will be out of moves king f4 of course tal could go for this bishop e6 earlier but first he's centralizing the king and only then uh, he will go for bishop e6 then we have f3 king g7 now since the pawn on h5 is unprotected only now it's high time to go for bishop e6 takes and the rook drops. Bishop b3, rook c5, resignation followed. Black is also going to lose one more pawn. If c4, for example, then takes. And then here, yeah, this is an easy win. There is no way out. So this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed the game. It was really a good one. Feel free to share with your friends as well. And as usual, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.